Yo, yo, sports card strategy show. Welcome, everyone. We are pumped to have you. Paul Hickey and Kendall McKee, the catalytic Kendall McKee with no offseason.com. <laughs> Kendall is also uh, I'm never involved saying that in again. several other businesses. <laughs> I know. I feel bad that I like, I, I, uh, I'm doing that to you because I actually no. like that word and I don't, and I only make fun of people that I like. So, oh, uh, fair. Okay, cool. There's then that. we're good. Uh, yeah. So that's just a trait that I that I've developed in the males in my family throughout the years. And the guys who like each other the most make fun of each other. So I picked up on that. But anyway, um, sports card strategy show. Kendall McKee, Paul Hickey, no offseason.com. Kendall's also with Wild Cards, Box Breaks, and Just Baseball, and um, 73 other sports and investing related businesses. Um, I shouldn't True. kid because I actually have a ridiculous amount of ventures as well, but we actually prioritize this for you, the listener. So um, thanks audience. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on Apple podcasts, Spotify, we've been getting a lot of good. Um, we've been actually getting a lot of good feedback, like people on eBay. Like if I make a sale um, or if I buy something from someone um, people have been quick to be like, Hey, you're the guy from sports card strategy. And they actually did that with Greg Longto as well. He forwarded me a, he's the host of our F1 card strategy show. And he forwarded me a little message over the weekend from somebody who they were transacting on eBay. And he's like, Hey, I hear you guys on the sports card strategy show, you know, slowly, but surely Kendall, we're, we're growing the audience, baby. Sick. People tweet me a lot about, uh, asking me plays of baseball cards. So, and That's I was like, great. how'd you find me? And they're like, cause you know, they could have found me in multiple areas and most of the time yeah. they're like yeah the sports car strategy show so actually that's a good segue into a couple things i wanted to talk about before i do kind of the show overview for today i got a couple housekeeping notes one is that i'm deciding that because of this um audience growth slowly but surely i guess um I want to do some t-shirts. I want to do some t-shirts. I've seen you uh, rocking yeah. your Just Baseball gear. I've got my data-driven design gear here, which is my other business, uh, my web nice. design and development business. Um, and so I think it's time. We used to do no off-season gear back in the day when it was a Dynasty Fantasy Football site, for those of you who don't do know. Do you have some of the old bring, ones? Bring it back. I do. I do. I have some old ones. Like I think we kept, I think we kept it in storage. I used to be... Um, it's a keepsake, the old t-shirt, because I used to be much heavier than I am now. Back when I worked for the Pistons, I kind of rewarded myself with food all the time. And so I ballooned up uh, to about probably 60 or 70 pounds more than I weigh now. And the designer who helped me design the first iteration ever of nooffseason.com, his name's Jason George. Shout out, Jason. Um, he, he worked for the Pistons all the way up until a couple years ago. But um, he helped me do the nooffseason.com logo. And it's actually like my face with like this chin fat. And so um, it's like this t-shirt with like my face with the chin fat and then like nooffseason.com right here. So if you take like the football laces part out of the logo and replace it with, with a fat face of, of, uh, of fat paw, as I, as I refer to myself fat uh, paw. From back in the day. Um, and actually it was a hit with like the family and the friends. They were all like wanted my face on a t-shirt. So I think that's probably the one I kept. And there was a version without my face. Cause that was just kind of a joke. Um, but, uh, yeah. So now I think what I want to do is do some sports card strategy show t-shirts, uh, with there is no off season. I'll work, work up with a little skinny design. face on it. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll see. We'll see. Sorry. I've um, interrupted you three times now. Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. But but this time around, it's not it's not about me, Kendall. It's about you, who's catalytic. It's about you know you're the catalyst of the team. Um, so we've got we've got some other team members. Uh, obviously, Andy Kaysen from Football Card Quest. Shout out. He's the host of our Football Card Strategy Show. We've got Greg Longto, who we spoke about a second ago, um, and then uh, yeah, some other guys that I'll mention maybe throughout the show. But anyway, um, I think it'd just be cool to give the audience something and also do a little bit of business development at the national mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. walk around give out some t-shirts but i'd actually like every premium member of the nooffseason.com sports card investment report to be the first to get t-shirts so i'll probably send them out to you guys the hosts and then um the members the premium members so if you want to if you want a t-shirt uh those guys will probably get them those guys and, and females will get them first and then the um 
Then from there, I will post a link on nooffseason.com. It may actually be up on the site by the time this show airs. Uh, go to nooffseason.com slash just the letter T. Um, just the letter T. Nooffseason.com slash just the letter T. And just request your free T-shirt. You know? T right should be the first We're gonna one. We're going to tee them up, baby. We're going to tee them up. Tee t- t- up. Tee yourself up. Get yourself a T. Nooffseason.com slash T. If you want a free T-shirt, I will hook you up. Um, it'll be a simple design sports card strategy show. There is no off season. The other housekeeping note actually is that Kendall, you'll be proud of me. I got through all 130 sports card investment (laughs) profiles. That's actually a really big deal. I am very excited for you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate your help. Just knowing that you, I did four of them. um, So, uh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you did four of them. So 127 to four is the score right now between between you and I. Man, I'm and, killing uh, it. It's great, though, because, you know, your input actually went into a lot of them. Um, I mentioned you and a lot of them, especially baseball, but definitely more than just baseball. And um, and so I'm happy. Yes, thank you for saying that. I'm very happy because it is it, – it, now it feels like I can add more content for the premium members. Like, I, I didn't want to – I'm big on like not yeah. jumping the gun and going into the next thing until the current thing is finished. And so um, now that the, and it'll never be finished, right? Because these things need to be updated every yeah. day basically. But now that I'm over the hump, I can work on some articles for, pre- for premium members. So you will see if you join or if you're already a member, you will start to see uh, some, some extra content in sort of a, um, I don't know if I'm going to call it like no off season insider articles or premium articles or whatever it is, but it'll, but I think um, we'll talk actually on today's show about a lot of things that aren't in the sports card investment report. And this will give me an, this will give me a forum to not necessarily have to update the rankings all the time, but for me to just do an article on something that I feel needs to be said and that I only want the premium members to know about. So I'm excited about both those things. Me too. I'm excited for the uh, the report to kind of be in its, in essence, like we had this, or like we've got this idea and we've got this like cool concept and everything, but it's like there was a bunch of front end work to kind of get it to where you could really get it rolling, you know, because it's got to have yeah. a lot of uh, pre work before it can be like its final product. And although people have been excited about it and people have been able to watch it and having numbers on things is really has been already been there, which is like over half the battle, but like the plays and stuff like that, when you go into that, when you subscribe, all those things, there's a lot of detailed depth there that I love to look at, you know, like for, I'm, I'm a big on like, um, in the, uh, in, in the invest, like, nft crypto investing world is called alpha so it's like you got the alpha behind it of like every the reason the play and all that kind of stuff and like a lot of reasoning behind your investment which i know if you're investing bigger dollars you know like for instance i bought a 20 or i bought a 33 dollar auto today this morning not much went into that but i've been you know like as we talked to um i think who is the guy? Was it Andy? Probably no, Paul Andy's Fisher. the football guy. Paul guy. Yeah, yeah Paul. Paul, Fisher. Paul is investing yeah. in a much different level. Than yeah, I yeah. Am. So, for sure, and that's but and that's, that's okay. what I love about. I'll so, get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the the cool thing I like about where we are right now with the product is that it's it was a beta product until now, and now the work that's been put into it, like I feel like it's an actual. A real product so now I feel better about people spending their money on it and then I have taken input from you from guys like Paul from you know like we we want you know I think that the the target audience for the sports card investment report premium is like if you spend $500 a month on sports cards and let's be honest I think we we probably all do without realizing it most of the time pretty easily I think that like sometimes you're like oh I only bought like you know a few $50 $50 PSA 10s from this one guy or whatever, but you know, you're not, yeah, unless that, you're keeping a spreadsheet quickly. and tallying things up, it adds up, it adds up really quickly. So we want to help you. If you're, if you're spending $500 a month or more on sports cards, or in that range, a few hundred dollars, I think 1999 a month is probably a steal from an investment report standpoint to help you invest, but also just entertainment. Like how many times 
throughout the year are you just bored when you're uh, when your sport is in the off season. And that's why our website's named no off season, because we want to put out con thoughtful content throughout the year in all sports so that um, even if it's your sports off season, you can, you can get some information and kind of scratch the itch. So, um, all right. So let's do a little show rundown because I think we've got a good, a good um, agenda for today. And we're going to start off with our recent buys and sells because that's actually going to hit a lot of, a lot of guys that I want to talk about. Um, so that could be a longer segment. And then you threw out the idea of doing some vintage ideas. So we might talk about some vintage today because again, we don't do that in the sports card investment report. So this is a good forum to do some vintage ideas. Um, we want to talk about a particular guy who is probably the best soccer player in the world. We won't reveal that just yet, but we will, uh, we will talk about his cards because not that many people are talking about his cards. Um, and then I want to do a baseball prospect follow-up with you uh because you threw out some good calls back in january february march about some really um low risk baseball prospects and i think that they're starting to materialize so i don't want to get i don't want to give anything away but i want to give you some some early props on the show because as i was updating the sports card investment report i was like okay holy crap kendall was he was right on about a lot of these guys um if not all of them so i was pretty happy about that um, and then I am going to have a guest appearance on a podcast called Hoops and Cards with a real cool guy out of Cleveland named Gary Underwood. So he and I, you know, we'll do a little bit of uh, content swap on our podcast. So you might hear me on Hoops and Cards. And so that triggered me to talk about my NBA flyers and bold predictions for 2022-23. So I'll preview that just a little bit. I won't give away more of what I'll talk about on Gary's show. And then... Um, I want to talk about a WNBA call that I made where I was just wrong about it. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And then the gauntlet, I got a budget gauntlet today. It's not crazy where it's like, Oh, you get, you know, $5,000 plus oh, heck card yeah. or, you know, whatever. So it's a budget. It's a budget. So like gauntlet. a realistic it's under, one for me. <laughs> it's under a thousand dollars. It's all the cards are under a thousand dollars. So, so it's not, not you know, sick. it's still expensive. There's still, there's still some expensive cards. Don't get me wrong, but, um, the gauntlet I think is going to be fun today. So you don't, you have no idea. I didn't even, I didn't even preview that. So you didn't even pre-work me. Um, didn't even give you a heads up. So we'll see how you do. Um, you will do great. So let's talk about, do you want to kick us off with your recent buys and sells before I go? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I, I didn't buy a whole lot this week. I've, as you guys have heard or have known, uh, I've been moving. And so that's pretty much dominated like 95% of my life. Um, and so, but I have um, bought into a lot of Bowman 22, which is no shocker. Um, I've bought wax and Bowman 22. Sing I haven't really bought singles for Bowman 22 because of the inflation of the product that like never buy singles when they first come out, just be patient. Um, I bought actually something that me and you talked about over text. I bought a Panini sticker, premier league 2020 rookie, uh, Anthony Gordon under 18 a sticker. Um, nice. I am an Everton fan. And so, um, I, but as I was, you know, they have a lot of energy right now because of the relegation battle and like their fans are going nuts and everything. But I think that, um, I think that Anthony Gordon is going to be the guy when Richarlison and Do Dominique Calvert-Lewin are moved on. The only caveat to this is I think, yeah, that's it right there. Um, the only caveat to that is um, that if they go to the championship, the card won't be worth much, but if they stay up and then uh, I think he has an opportunity to potentially be a player at not only Everton that gets a lot of attention, um, but English national that gets a lot of attention. And also um, he could go to a bigger club as well. So kind of a pre-play there. So how old is, but this uh, would definitely Anthony be a Gordon flyer and... for me. Okay. Well, how, so how He's old 21. is Gordon and, and how, Okay. I see. I see his date of birth here on the sticker. So 21 years old. Um, and yeah, this is you, you texted me and I, I started doing a little bit of research and you just see that like there's this Panini um, Premier League football sticker 2020. And what's your plan for the sticker? Because you know, you and I have talked about this. Like I, 
I bought a lot of stickers here in Spain and kind of broke even with all my stickers. Um, I still have a couple Mbappe stickers that are SGC 10s from uh, SGC 10 Graybacks from 2018 World Cup. So I might profit on those. But uh, yeah, generally my sticker plays were kind of all a, all a wash. What's your plan for the sticker? Yeah, I'm not expecting much. Um, like I said, this is a flyer for me. And the only reason that I really did it was I'm an Everton fan. So like if it doesn't work out, then I'll keep it as an Anthony Gordon sticker that I like. But if it doesn't, you know, if it if it does work out, I'm like, well, that could have been a smart play because when you watch him, he he's not a name that a lot of people know. But when you watch him, you're like, whoa, that dude is electric on the field, catalytic, if you will, Paul. Yeah, and so I'm just like, he's a little older. He's kind of a late starter. He, I, I would assume he has a rookie card in this year's uh, Panini set, a Prism set. Um, Unless this counts as his rookie card, I Stickers checked the checklist. Of- I I checked the um twenty twenty one twenty two twenty two to Premier League Prison Premier League checklist, and he does not have anything in there. Um, but twenty so twenty twenty two sets maybe if there's like an adrenaline set that comes out later this year or something like that. We know that's not necessarily an investable product, but maybe twenty twenty two twenty three Prism. We'll have his rookie card. I'm not sure. So here's another reason why I made the sticker play is because there's not other cards. So given the fact that he could end up like kind of getting some attention at some level over the next you know couple of months, depending on what happens with the transfers, depending on if he potentially gets call up uh, to the national team, like even in like a friendly or something, and or it, you know if he like bags a hat trick to save Everton from relegation or something, he's got no other cards. The stickers is the only option, you know. And so I thought, you know, it's a decent play. Plus, I like him. So if it doesn't work out, I still have a sick card that I like. So yeah, and it's um, how much did you pay for it? Like I saw the some of the listings are around twenty twenty dollars or thirty dollars um yeah but those, paid, those are over here in europe so that's true i paid like twelve dollars um and then it was like an eight dollars shipping so okay nice well i like that anything else you want to report on for your buys yeah i bought a josh smith auto um josh not the basketball player <laughs> uh josh smith um the rangers prospect um he is been tearing up triple a And um, I think I mentioned him on my baseball podcast, uh, the last um, baseball specific podcast on the sports card um, that I did. I I mentioned him. I bought a uh, out of 499 refractor Bowman first Chrome auto for 30 bucks from him. I hadn't seen one under um, under like 80 in a while. And I just entered an auction and it turned out nobody was paying attention and I got it for $27. So. Nice. Good work. What, what year is Josh Smith? He is 2017. Um, he's in a Yankees uniform too. Um, which is a little, which is, um, unique. Yeah. It's, Oh, 20. Does that add any value to the card? Do you think because of the Yankees fan base, does that ever happen in with baseball prospecting where if they're in a uniform, I know sometimes with soccer, the kit that they're in matters, but does that, does that translate over to baseball prospect cards? You know, I've often wondered if the change of jersey matters much, and I, I don't think it does. Um, you know, you think about some of the big guys that are kind of surfacing right now, and some of their early cards were in a different uniform. You know, Tatis, his first cards were not in a Padres jersey. Um, you, you've got um, – like Trent Grisham, I know he's not a big guy, but his first ones were in a Brewers uniform. You've got uh, O'Neill Cruz, first cards in a Dodgers uniform. Really, there's not typically in that way, um, especially with the names that matter, um, you don't see any much of a difference. You basically just see them buying because of the name value, like of their actual player name. But I can imagine like on the low end, you know, like low, low end, like five to ten dollar autos i imagine some of those guys get more hype just because somebody's like oh a yankees auto i don't know who it is but you know he's a yankee okay you know like and so maybe like 
uninformed or unintentionally arrogant investors might do that, but I don't think there's much gotcha. difference. Gotcha. Any sales you want to report where, uh, before I take over my buys and sells? Um, let me see. I'll look at my selling page, see if I had anything that I'm forgetting about. Oh, um, I have a Max Muncy, one of the new guys. I have a Max Muncy out of 250 um, that has been bid on several times, but I haven't. Uh, I, I have it listed for one, 125. I have like seven watchers. Um, and the biggest offer I've got is about 100 ish dollars. So, probably going to pull the trigger on that pretty soon, probably by the time this airs. Um, so, I'm going to assume that's going to be a sell for me. But. Nice. I've been trying to move some of those. Um, my philosophy is like with Bowman specifically, because so much hype right out of the gate, people want these cards, whatever I get, even if I love it, I sell it um, because then I can mm -hmm. just buy it back in six months for 30% off. Yeah. It's like you're already, you're already selling at a, at a peak at a spike just because of the, the new release, which I'm oh, envious of out. because I, I really can't do that um, based on my geography. Um, is that our guy? Is. is that our yeah. guy that we're about to talk about? That's yeah, a nice so, card. So I pulled Very nice. This weekend. Very I've nice. I've been buying a lot of the, the tops. tops Champions League stuff. So. UEFA Champions League. Okay. Yeah. Nice. But I, I, New release. So are you going to sell that one too right now or are you going to hold me. that? <laughs> No, okay. I'm probably gonna hold it. It's like ten dollars. So okay. Yeah. Well, hey, ten bucks isn't bad for for a guy in like what his thirteenth or fourteenth season or something like that. Yeah, true, um, true. But, yeah, uh, a guy that's <laughs> definitely not a chase in the product. No, he's not. Um, well, before we get to him, I'll I'll quickly go through my my buys and talk about some of these guys. And then I did have a couple sales. So um, I entered the week, not necessarily thinking I was going to buy a whole lot, but then it's one of those things where I saw some deals and, uh, a been lot of there. the cards that I had been watching for a while. Yeah. A lot of the, also a lot of the cards that I've been watching for a while, sellers made me some offers that I thought, um, I either countered to go even lower or, or I liked their offer just based on the recent comps. And so, um, I'll kind of quickly walk you through one of them is this, uh, I've been wanting to go 1981 Tops Magic Johnson, and I got this uh, PSA DNA Authentic Auto, which I think is a pretty sick auto. And the card, actually, I'm not going to bring it up full full screen right now, but I think the card's actually decently centered compared to some other versions of this card that I've seen out there. It's usually not top to bottom centered well at all and left to right centered at all. So um, my understanding based on my research is that this is an authentic card. It doesn't have a card grade, but it has a PSA DNA authentic auto. And I did pay a total of, uh, it's two eighty six sixty when you count in shipping. So basically $287 shipped to the vault. Um, so my so magic are you shipping collection everything grew to the vault? a little bit. Right now I'm shipping everything to the vault just because I want to be able to sell, um, quicker and I want to be able to give people extra cards. So even if it's like a lower value card, I don't mind shipping it to the vault because um, like I, I'm not really doing this anymore with shipping lower valued cards to the vault, but once upon a time I did. And so I like to kind of include those extra cards in the package just as kind of a thank you for buying from me even though it doesn't serve the purpose of like <laughs> using it as packing material because it's pwcc who's shipping it but yeah i'm shipping everything to the vault wax oh, singles cool. everything graded not graded. i just like now, the to graded, talk to you when about I buy your a, process yeah when i grow i'll talk a little bit more about it because when i buy a graded card the fee is only like it's less than two dollars so basically like you save you save money on sales tax shipping it to oregon so there's no sales tax. And then you, oh, you pay nice. maybe $2 to have it ingested by PWCC. And so really all in, I'll be like less than 290 on this magic. And my plan is I really want to take, I've got maybe 10 of these cards that are not card graded and, and or in an older PSA slab or in a Beckett slab. And I, I think I want to take them all 
ship them back to myself when I get back to the United States in, in late June, early July, and then just figure out like a cro- like a, like a cross grading, not cheap, but like, I think cross grading each card so that there's, they're all in new PSA slabs with card grades and auto grades, I think probably is worth the initial investment. And then the longer I hold it, like I think mad, these magic cards uh, should go up. They're not going to spike. I don't think, but I think that they should continue to go up. Hopefully. Yeah. It's a, so, it's a long-term play. That's yeah. That's my play. And then a shorter term play because even though he's, he's recovering from a pretty bad hamstring injury, I bought basically my, my second big Pedri auto. And this one, the first one I bought a while back was a PSA eight for around the same price. And it was, uh, a bubble bubble refractor short print not serial numbered auto from 2020 tops chrome uefa uh rookie with the rc designation and this one also a psa but it's the green refractor auto out of 99 and this came from the slab stocks newsletter so every day i get the slab stocks newsletter and i just kind of scour it and think okay are there any cards a i need to you know is this a good tool to update the sports card investment report yes B, are there any cards that could be kind of a sneaky play? And I think to get a Pedri for $615 shipped to the vault, so two, maybe two extra bucks. So, you know, $616, $617 into this Pedri. You had what Gerard PK say something about him maybe being the best player in the world. Um, yeah. So hopefully that actually happens and, and I can make some money on my Pedri investments. Either way, I'm kind of like you are with the Spanish teams. Uh, with Everton. I'm a Spanish team fan of guys like Pedri, Fati, Vinicius, Musa. Fati scored this the, week. The guy... Did Fati score? I knew he was back, yeah. but I didn't see that he scored. That's amazing. He did. Nice. I was going to talk about it in my podcast. But we'll talk nice. About okay. Listen to the soccer card strategy show later this <laughs> week when Kendall breaks down Ansu Fati because yeah. he is Kendall knows my love affair for Fati, and uh, I really, really am It wasn't a great-looking goal, but it was a goal, and that's what matters. Well, yeah, first of all, I texted you, and I was like, he played 10 minutes and didn't get hurt. Well, that was the biggest – that was the first yeah. hurdle. And then the second hurdle, I guess, is getting, on, getting in the goal, getting the goal again, which is phenomenal. So I'm pumped about that. That's great news. Um, yeah. And then, uh, okay, two purchases today that I didn't really anticipate – and this is a guy, it kind of like, I literally woke up and I'm like seven hours ahead of central time in the U S. And so I really, what that means is I don't get to bid in the last five minutes of any eBay auctions. But today I happened to get up at like four 30 and just decide to like stay up. And there was a yeah, cam Thomas me pretty early. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Cam- no, Cameron- I mean like for you, it was early for me. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was up some weird hours today and, and I took advantage of it because I waited until the final seconds of a Cameron Thomas from the Brooklyn Nets auto, I like that. Uh, I like rookie that. contenders, rookie ticket auto and got it for, for $27. Um, so pretty much same price you bought, you bought your auto for, um, for, uh, for Josh Smith, I think. And it just, it felt to me like, okay, there's all these other dudes in the NBA that I don't like as much as Cam Thomas. And that's what I'll elaborate on a little bit on this show and a little bit more on hoops and cards. But um, like Jose Alvarado, for example, Jose Alvarado is the guy that played uh, guard and kind of had a coming out party in the, in the play in against San Antonio and then played well in the series against Phoenix. He's the Pelicans guard. He's undrafted. And so his rookie ticket autos are going for like people want like 70 bucks, you know, or in in some cases, 150 bucks for this Jose Alvarado guy. And I'm not saying he's not a bad buy, but my thought was like, I can get Cam Thomas. I'm going to load up on that dude because I think, you know, more at nooffseason.com to come, but he's in the top 125 now on the investment report. And I'm going to be doing an article on uh, who's the next, like, I'm going to look at, like, who's the next Jordan Poole? Who's the next Tyrese Maxey? Like, a lot of people are talking about Jordan Poole. Yeah, great. Like, that's happening. So, there's no, like, there's, there's no prediction there. Like, that's already happening. So, there's no real thought. Sorry, but, like, anyone talking about Jordan, about Jordan Poole? Poole, like, there's no real thought leadership. 
went around like Jordan Poole. I mean, there is, if you were to say something like Jordan Poole is, is going to do X, Y, Z more than what he's done right now, which I think he probably will. But I think what people need to know is like, who's the next Tyrese Maxey? Who's the next Jordan Poole? And I put Cameron Thomas in that discussion. So the other card I got was, uh, okay. this was interesting. I, I, I want to bring this up because it was listed at 125 $125. A contender's, uh, contenders rookie ticket auto playoff variation out of 99 Cam Thomas. It was listed at $125. I added it to my watch list. I then received an offer for like $99. And initially, back when I bought the Caden Clark card on the show, I did not think this way. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, that's great. Like $99, I'll pay that. But then I took it one step further and I said, what are the most recent comps? And the most recent there comps were go. actually more like, <laughs> thank you thank you i'm learning i'm learning we're all we're all getting there you know we are, um, we are. It's and a journey. so the most the, the journey the most recent comps were like 55 60 bucks and so i replied back within the offer and i said look i'll give you 65 the most recent comps 55 or 60 i'll give you 65 and so they the the, the, the seller accepted the counter offer right away so i think we're both happy um you know i saved basically $34 off of what I was going just by taking an extra few minutes to do some easy research. And, um, yeah, thanks to everyone who sold me. That's cards. actually, that's pretty a pretty big deal. The purchases. Like, you know, like, yeah, I think so because that's going to be about the profit margin of a card like this, right? Like you're not, right. you're not, you don't really expect a card. Like when you buy a $50 auto or an, or a hundred dollar auto, like, you know, and it's Cam Thomas, who's the 27th pick overall in the draft. He's not like, he doesn't have, um, what would T say? Like good stock, good, good stock, stock. <laughs> I forgot about that. It's not like, it's not like the 27th pick people get hype over, you know? Right. So it's, it's a flyer. Cam Thomas is a flyer. So when you can save 34 bucks on a flyer, like that's could be my profit margin, but I actually think this guy, you know, best As a case percentage, scenario, that's really good too, though. I mean, think about it. You got yeah. like almost 35% off or something like that. Yeah, it's big. It's a big percentage off, especially from the original listing. It's like half off the original listing, which. Um, <laughs> so if he would have told you like, people hey, don't, don't. I'll sell you this for 50% off. You'd have been like, oh, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and then, but like, totally. now you're like, yeah, yeah. I did pretty good at, 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 at 65. I'm like, no, dude, you did really good at 65. That's a good point. That's a good point. So I didn't, I didn't want to just hit on Cam Thomas as a player. I also wanted to hit on like this strategy, right? Like the first one, sure. getting in the last five minutes of an auction, which you've talked about. And then the second one, um, Dude, that did me dirty this <laughs> like, week, by the way. What did? So this weekend... I have, so sorry, I totally got you off track here. I'm very distracted this morning. Like my brain is all over the place because I think I had too many cups of coffee. So <laughs> I'm like on super adrenaline um, and I'm currently drinking another cup of coffee. So, you know, about 45 minutes from now. I'll Always be a good asleep. move. Yeah. But um, there's a, there's a, a breaker that I love and you Typically what I love, you know, when a breaker is buying from another breaker, you know, that dude's good. You know, like, I don't know how to explain that, but, um, he does 10 case breaks and he does it by player. And so I like to jump in those so I can just like, um, get like a specific guy I'm kind of honing in on. So if I'm honing in on one guy in a set, I go to KOS breaks and, and break through him. Um, um, so shout out to John in Las Vegas. He does a great job. But um, but what I did was I tried to get a Dustin Harris slot in the Bowman 2210. Or a, it was like a five caser. Um, and I, I was like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm willing to pay 130 for this slot, which is a lot for me, but not, uh, which was not a lot for Dustin Harris, especially when you get everything that's in a 10 case, you know, thing. Um, when his autos are selling for like 80 bucks, that's you're definitely going to get at least one auto. So, um, I, uh, I, I had a 135, $130, sorry, $130 max that I was willing to pay. And I was winning the bid with 15 seconds left. 
And at 14 seconds, it went over 130. So I just like sat back and trying to, you know, be patient. Like I was trying to stick to my guns and it ended up selling for 275. It went, it doubled, it doubled in 15 seconds. And I was like, dang, I sometimes hate yeah. eBay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That makes sense. When you said you got, you got burned by that a little bit because I've, yeah, I've had that happen with a lot of F1 cards, like the F1 cards that I'm bidding on. Like they go, they go from my price range to like triple my price range in the last hour of an auction. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> like I yeah. thought I was in the money. I thought I was in the money, card, man. No. Okay. Dang it. Thought I was, thought I was yeah. making a play, but somebody else scooped it in and you know, took, took a bigger risk. I think somebody but, make um, a big boy play. Anyway. Yeah, there's just tons of cards. So you, I think you got to look at it like, hey, there's tons of cards. So if you miss out on the card and, and you know, it goes for two, two times what you were going to pay, I think you got to look at that as a win too because you can always buy other cards. Um, and you can always right. use your knowledge from that one particular – all of your re- rationale as to why you were going to buy that one card like still holds still for price. other cards. So. Yeah still applies so yeah not many sales this week i did list a uh marquise hollywood brown rookie patch auto that i bought for like 15 bucks i listed it and then hollywood i just decided to sell it yeah i just decided to sell it for 17 because this is actually this is the downfall of the ball Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. like you you know and, and the downfall of ebay we all know like you don't the condition of the card that you're buying on ebay um the condition of cards matter and the condition of the card you're buying on eBay, like you really don't know what it is. And this was an example of, I bought this card in September um, and I was excited to get a rookie patch auto for 15 bucks, but there was a reason it was 15 bucks. It had just like really horrible corners. And so somebody, the buyer pointed out, he's like, I'm going to make an offer for 17 bucks. Just look at the condition of the card. I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, and I just got rid of it because I just don't want to do, I'd rather, my thought there is like, I'd rather not de- I'd rather deal with someone who's reasonable and knows what they're buying. And especially on eBay, I hope that they give me a good review just because I think if, if I would have sold this for say 50 bucks and then someone gets it and they're upset with the card, then I risk a bad review. And I yeah. think, you know, for that little amount of money, um, it's probably not worth it. So I'd ra- yeah. I, I just went ahead and sold it and probably, I think I included maybe some extra cards with the guy too. Um, and then another one, I tried to be more strategic with this Ja 2019 Donruss Optic PSA 10. It's a common card. Like there's, there's a million of these, but I think yeah. I broke even. I bought it last year for around the same price. Um, the auction ended like right after Golden State blew out uh, Memphis and Ja got injured. So I probably yeah, didn't. Yeah, that was, that was rough. I, yeah, my strategy was was sound, but the – result of the game sometimes you just can't do anything about that and it just didn't go didn't go my way so you know what are you gonna do yeah i'm nervous about that jaw injury actually looks yeah, i don't like know a menis- i haven't looks like a meniscus okay. tear to me okay is that similar to what Giannis had last year in the playoffs where he had to he had to he came back quicker than no he had a hyper extension possible, but... oh that's right yeah but it was but it, like i remember watching that because i'm a i'm a big like fan of the bucks like i'm not i'm not a bucks fan i'm not I'm, that's not what i'm saying but like when i watch the bucks i'm like this is just something that is just unreal to watch you know watching giannis play is just unreal but um when he hyperextended his knee last year, I was like, that dude's done. That dude's done for a year. That's a torn ACL, PCL, TCL, yeah. ZCL, XYZ, everything, <laughs> everything. Like that dude, his leg just fell off. Like there's no way. And then he like, right. he's crying and like pounding on the floor and needs help to the locker room. And then he's freaking back the next day. I'm like, the Greek freak is truly a freak. <laughs> like what is going he is. on? He is. Yeah. Giannis is is he's number one on our sports that, card investment report for a lot and of he reasons, should be you know that dude's a beast but I think it really goes yeah. into his I, I, uh, really I do I think there's a lot to um how he keeps his body healthy and strong I think that's has a ton to do with it you know like why I think Anthony Davis gets injured all the time and I never ever ever invest in him 
And because when you read stories that beat writers have put up, and especially when you hear about stuff that happened in new Orleans, he, he's not dedicated to the game. Like he, yeah. he is, he's good. He's very good. His talent <laughs> James gets Harden. There. Yeah. 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 Yes, exactly. They're even, it blows my mind that these guys are at that level straight off of talent and and they do get in the gym but it's not like like lebron giannis uh or Giannis, um kobe like there's guys that literally they eat sleep breathe repeat their recovery everything is in uh, tom brady's the same way like there's just like that other level that takes it and i think you get injured less you get you know like look at lebron's career Look at Giannis, or you look at Giannis's career. Sure, Kobe had like the torn uh, Achilles, but that was pretty late into his career, you know. And and a torn Achilles can just be from an from an older uh, career's perspective. Like Brad Gazan just tore his Achilles, so he's a goalkeeper uh, for the U.S. So, but he's way up there in age too. And so, anyway, sorry, I got on like this weird yeah. like keep your body well healthy. injury no kick <laughs> yeah in well you should think about that as a sports card investor and that is why Giannis is number one because he does keep his body in that condition and injury is a very real it's also the reason I'll be honest why I hesitate to put a lot of running backs and wide receivers up very high on the report because even though those guys do keep their body in in very good condition they um they're just prone to injury because of the game and so you know, I think that this injury with Ja will probably spur a lot of discussion about like whether he's invest whether he's as investable. I think Ja's going it'll be interesting to see what happens with Ja. I still think he's he's a top he's he's a he's a top 7 8 basketball investment for sure and um could could be number 1 one day. Uh and you know, this there's a lot of issues with this jaw injury. We probably don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but um, yeah, it is, it is something to look out for with sports card investing for sure. Now is probably not the time to buy jaw just because of the injury and because of the fact that it is the NBA playoffs. So there's a lot of hype. There's still a lot of hype around jaw. Um, yeah, there will I would be wait probably like a better three buying months cycle for and him, there will be a window. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be a window. And December was really low for basketball cards. So just keep in mind any of the guys – that we're talking about from a basketball standpoint, December. Um, it'll be interesting to see if December 22 is the same as December 21, but everything dipped really low. Um, yeah. You could get Trey Young stuff for dirt cheap. You could get everybody for dirt cheap. So, um, well. Let's, let's, let's segue into uh, a guy that, does not get much hobby love. And I just wonder if we should be talking about him more. And if so, what cards should we be talking I about? And that's Kareem this Benzema. Discussion. I'm so pumped. Okay. Well, I want to let you lead it because I, I see, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see I've got some Benzema cards pulled up here in terms of uh, what people want for for the Benzema cards. I'm not saying that these are the accurate prices that you should pay. But, you know, there's a 2018 National Treasures Colossal out of 20 auto, uh, on-card auto patch. You know, things like that are not going to be cheap. But I almost feel like you probably shouldn't – if you're going to invest in Benzema, you probably should go high-end. What do you think? Like, what's the strategy for – investing in in a guy like Benzema and maybe give it for those for those of us who don't know soccer like you know soccer maybe give give a little bit of a career storyline for for Benzema sure I'll start with um with Kareem and and how like my like love for him and that that'll kind of explain it so when I first started watching soccer it was like 2009 ish um and Soccer wasn't readily available on my TV. My dad is not a fan of soccer. So, you know, I had to watch it by myself. And I also lived in central time. So, like, if I was going to get up and watch anything, it was going to have to be at, like, 5 in the morning for the EPL. Plus, Kareem didn't play in the EPL. So, I was just like, you know. So, once I got into college, my first year in college, I found out about the Champions League. And so, uh, I played FIFA all the time. And the only real team that I knew of was or was Real Madrid because I knew of Ronaldo. 
Um, and so like I followed Ronaldo into being a Madrid fan because I was just, I was just, I would watch YouTube videos of Ronaldo when I was like um, 15 years old, when he was tearing up Manchester, when all his little step overs and stuff, I didn't even know anything about soccer, but I was just so amazed at the athleticism that I was, I just would watch um, Ronaldo videos like all day long. Uh, and so he was actually, do you remember, did you ever have a MySpace? I, yeah, I remember MySpace. Of course. I'm okay. old. Remember? Well, I, I didn't know like if you were, so there was like a window for MySpace where like, I didn't know if you were older than that window that used MySpace or if you were just like, yeah, I'm out, you know, but anyway, so you could edit. I, I didn't really use it, but I had one. I had one. Okay. So you could, do you remember how you could edit the backgrounds? of your profile. Yeah. So I know HTML nothing about code. soccer, literally nothing, never, you know, like I'm from Texas. So like, if you didn't speak Spanish, you couldn't play soccer. And that's not like I'm legit serious. My high school team, the coach was the Spanish teacher and he didn't, um, he didn't speak like English, like that's, you know, and so I didn't make the team. Obviously I wasn't as good. So like, I just didn't, I just didn't have a love for it. There wasn't like an easy access to it. Um, but there was amazing parts of it that I was always fathomed with. I had Ronaldo as my background on MySpace, and I had no idea who he even really was. But uh, so anyway, so that followed me into Madrid. So when in like 2009, 10, 11 ish, I started um, playing FIFA pretty consistently. Um, I started uh, watching um, some stuff. And then that's when I found out about Champions League because it was like at 3 p.m. time when uh, central time when they would come on so i would get out of class and i would come home plus i was living with the whole soccer team so that made it a whole lot easier as well in college i lived with the soccer team um and they were all from all over the world there was like british guys um africans australians like it was from all over the world it was freaking nuts that's a different story for a different day but so i started watching real madrid around that uh ninth champions league title Kareem Benzema was on the team at the time. Kareem has been on their team for a long time and has always been overlooked because of several other factors. But uh, I would always play with Kareem because his headers were insane on, on FIFA. Like he would just like, you could just cross it in from anybody and Kareem would just rise up and just head it into it. So like I had this love affair for Kareem and then, you know, all the stuff that went around, like he had some bad media publicity a, a couple of years ago where he was in some trials and so he was going through some stuff. He, he got kind of knocked off the French league team and it seemed like everything was going away from Kareem. Like he was on the best team in the world. He was also on the best country in the world at the time and nobody was talking about him. Like he was literally the striker behind or like on the same team as Mbappe. You know, it's like Mbappe, Pogba, and all, you know, like all this hype around them. And then like Kareem's just like, I'm actually the one scoring goals and nobody cared, you know, like, and yeah. um, it seems like finally for the first time in his career, people are like, wow, this dude is actually very good. And I'm sitting here going, he's been good the whole time, you know? And so yeah. I, I'm, I'm really happy for Kareem that he, uh, from his move from Lyon to, to uh, Real, he's finally like... He beat out Iguain for the spot. Like they moved Iguain from Real to Napoli. Um, and then, so he beat him out. And then he beat out Murata. Murata ended up going uh, to Italy as well. And so, like, the three of those guys were all in Real Madrid at the same time. Kareem beat him out. And Kareem's just been the guy the whole time, which I think is really cool because Real Madrid really doesn't stick with players forever and ever. Um, unless they're just like, like very few guys, they stick for forever and ever. You think of like Sergio Ramos, you think of like uh, Iker Casillas, you think of um, those kind of guys. Well, Kareem is now a guy that's going to potentially take them to another Champions League title. You know, when you're thinking about guys in, in the projectable near, you know, uh, near future, Kareem is a guy that you could eventually invest in. Also, I would invest big in Kareem if you're going to invest in Kareem. And I think you addressed that a little bit. Um, like if you're going to invest in Kareem at this point, you shouldn't be buying, you know, like uh, what I just showed you earlier, you know, like this little uh, speckle, yeah. you know, this thing. Like this is a 10 to $12 card. 
Never in its life is it going to be more than ten to twelve dollars. You're buying this card at its peak, but like, uh, but that 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 National Treasures auto right there. Not only could he potentially play for France in the World Cup, not only could he potentially win. Oh man, that PSA sticker right there is looking rough. There's some PSA uh, ten stickers right now for around three thousand. They they want. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's like so. Like, you need to re. That one needs to be re slabbed. <laughs> like. Let's go. That one needs to be reslabbed for sure. (laughs) But um, yeah, I think I would buy um that like something around that like that value if I if I was if I was like pulling the trigger on Kareem. Not saying that I wouldn't right now. I just can't. Like I don't have that kind of capital because Kareem is outside of my buying window. Um, but if you if you did, I would go big on Kareem because you're 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 it's a it's a it's kind of a safe investment. Like he's kind of a he's kind of one of those living goats type thing. Like he's still playing, but he's almost on the tail end of his career. Probably like two, three, four, five years away from the end, and um, his worst stuff is behind him. Like he, his trials and everything is behind him, and he's finally getting the attention. So, yeah, and like you said, he could potentially be the best player in the world. Yeah, so now could be an interesting time to to buy a high-end card of Benzema and then there's markers coming up because you've got the premier the uh Champions League potential Champions League final uh I don't know when that is off the top of my head I'm not sure if you do but then there's also the World Cup and he's he plays for France obviously so um while you're looking up the the Champions League uh schedule I'm wondering if um the leaf, the leaf cards. So leaf, th- and this might take us into another direction because we've kind of hit on Kareem. May twenty eighth. Um, okay, so there's from the airing of this episode, it'll air on May tenth. So there's three, there's three weeks, which is a long enough window to go high end flip three weeks from now if he wins and you know scores. Is he a the Real Madrid like star had, that you would buy been. though? Well, I mean, I like Vinicius um quite a bit i mean there's a lot of players uh, so that i don't you could potentially invest in on that team yeah yeah i don't i don't know i mean it's hard to it's hard to say but i do think he's the surest bet for a, a performance worthy of a card spike does the hype and the performance happen at the same time we're not sure right but uh Maybe to your point, like he's finally there. And we'd love to know in the comments from, from you all, like, what do you think of, of Benzema? Like, does he have a market? Like, you know, you could sort this right now to sold listings and, and kind of see a little bit of his market. Um, what are some of the recent Benzema sales? You know, they've gone, um, you know, they've, they're a lot of best offer accepted. So we don't, you know, I think 130 point shows the, the actual price, does, but yeah. You know, he's he's selling. He sold an awful lot in March and April. There's a sale in May of a Leaf Auto. And that that's actually what I wanted to ask you. Like, are the Leaf Autos, and I have a selfish reason for asking this, are the Leaf Autos of a guy like Benzema investable? Because I forgot to mention this in my earlier buys, but I did order two boxes of Pro Set Soccer Hobby from Leaf's website over the weekend because there is Holland and Messi autos in there and they're cheap. They're under, you know, it's $265 a box. So it's not like it's, you know, it's, that's the whole thing with leaf autos is that the debate is, are they investable? The good news is they're usually a lot cheaper than a licensed auto. The bad news is because they're not licensed, like what ceiling do they have? But with a guy, with guys like Holland, Messi and Benzema, um, what's your take on specifically Leaf autos for those guys? Because you see a lot of them here as you look at listings for Benzema. I, I've met the Leaf CEO. Uh, I, I like him a lot. I think he's hilarious. Um, you know, hopefully that I can introduce you guys at the national. That would be pretty cool. Um, but I'm We'd not love a to have huge him on the show. Leaf products. Yeah, that. Yeah. I, I, and he's one of those guys that that would love to be on the show. I think. Um, for instance, there was a there was a breaker that was doing some leaf case breaks, and there was like some fishiness going on. Like they had cut some labels and like made it look like it wasn't open, and then they opened it, and then they had taken the hit slot 
bits out and then put it back together. And then like, and you could barely tell, but the CEO saw it on Twitter and the CEO said, you, you've messed this up. You need to reconcile this. And I, I'm coming to call you on this. And I was like, I love that. You know, I love that. I love that the CEO of the company is like doing quality control in Twitter, you know, but um, anyway, yeah. he, he's a cool guy. Um, some of it. So the reason why I think Benzema could potentially be worth it on in the leaf product is because there is not a whole lot of high end Benzema. Uh, and, and so this kind of plays into the same kind of mental theory that I had for Anthony Gordon. You know, if anything happens, you know, whatever is available is what's going to be hyped, you know? And so obviously Benzema has a lot of cards being out for the last 15 years, but he doesn't have a whole lot of high end cards. And so if you're looking at high end autos, if, if leaf is what you can get your hands on, then I say go for it in this case, not in all cases, but in this case, because you know, in 20 days, you'll have an opportunity to potentially flip it if he scores. And when Benzema scores, he scores in bunches. So he typically has like a brace or a hattie what, before, you know, it's never just like, oh, he's, you know, he just scored one. You know, like Benzema just like has days. And so if he has a day in the World Cup finals, um, that's, that's going to potentially going to spike. But if you're, term, if you're hedging your bet a little bit at all with this, and if you're nervous, it's about buying it. There's another opportunity for his market to go up when France is in the World Cup in like six months. Yeah, it's interesting. I think we needed to give we needed to give Benzema his due. I think he's a good he's a there's a clear play. Go high end now. Um, look at a flippable window to sell. Should he have a big performance in a Champions League final? And then if that doesn't happen, don't freak out. And look towards yeah, the world please don't panic to sell. list at the appropriate time. Yeah, don't panic sell because he's also like Kendall mentioned, like he's a he's a legend. I mean, anyone who knows anyone who knows world soccer well knows that Benzema is like um like you said, he's had some issues off the field, but off the pitch. But he uh he's a legend, so it's interesting. <laughs> so it's interesting. So speaking of legends, are are there any vintage ideas that you want to throw out there anyone that you think from any sport uh that's retired is worth is worth looking at i remember a little over a year ago the market ballooned up huge for tr guys even like troy aikman and um you know like your your hall of famers but not necessarily like your your goat your stars your low and your local stars but not necessarily like your goats and so um, so roast me in the comments if you think Troy Aikman's like a goat, but anyway, I think he's a good example. Troy Aikman, John Elway, Jim Kelly, guys like that. Um, and even in like basketball, <laughs> I could go on and on and list a ton of guys, but are there any vintage plays that you're looking at? I got burned pretty bad by some vintage plays last year. Cause, um, like right as I returned into the hobby, I was like, man, I don't know anything about these new, I, I know about these new prospects but I don't know anything about how new cards uh, work. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to buy, you know, PSA eight and nines of Barry, um, uh, uh, Barry Bonds, Nolan Ryan, uh, Deion Sanders, um, those kind of guys. And it burned me pretty bad. Like I lost quite a bit of, of, of my liquidity pool um, because of it because I bought at the peak basically. And I was buying stuff that doesn't really necessarily retain value. Like, um, like commons that were like PSA eights. And I didn't really, at the time it was all I could afford because the market was like at its literal peak <laughs> so far, you know, which I think we will surpass that by the way, in the next five to 10 years, which that isn't a conversation to, <laughs> to add Paul into, but, um, the other Paul, yeah. um, but, when I look at those kind of players, I've typically stayed away from that since I got burned so bad. But I think when I'm approaching the thought of, of that again, um, there's a couple of names that stick out in my head that I wouldn't, I don't know if they're considered vintage at this point, because like right. in my, in, 
you know, it, it's like, what's your definition of vintage? Is your definition of vintage retired players? You know, because, okay, great. You know, that could be guys that retired a year ago. You know, like Vince Carter, is he considered vintage at this point? You know, like, right. um, like a Vince Carter rookie card, maybe I would consider that vintage, you know, but like, anyway. So for me, my top vintage investment for something that I would enjoy, but also would appreciate. So like I try to buy, especially if it's not outside of my wheelhouse, like my, you know, prospects, if it's prospects and stuff like that for baseball, I literally buy because I know it's going to go up. I, it, there's no emotion attached to it. You know, it's just straight looking at a chart, you know, almost like a technical analysis chart work in, in any sort of natural investing. But when you're talking for me, when I'm talking about veterans, I'm thinking about like this guy right here, Pudge Rodriguez. I'm a huge Pudge, Pudge guy, but everybody loves Pudge, but Pudge cards aren't necessarily super valuable. So like, you know, what do you do there? I'm probably not going to buy a ton of, of, of in case, you know, slabs of Pudge. But what I am going to buy is Kobe cards. Um, okay. Kobe is going to, is going to continue to, to have runs. Like he's every time that every time the anniversary comes up of, of everything, they're going to, I would, could see Kobe cards pumping for the rest of forever. You know, it's like every time yeah. the, the anniversary comes up, it's going to keep happening. You know, say his other daughters go on and do great things. Kobe's cars are continue to pump. Mamba University is still a thing. They're going to continue to pump. Anytime anybody talks about body armor, like his investment in body armor that was worth like six million that turned into 200 and something million. Like that's a business thing he did. That's going to pump. Anytime his wife takes any of like that success, like we're seeing her kind of in the news as well. That's going to pump, you know? So it's like Kobe is my number one that I'm going to invest in, um, for legends or for quote unquote vintage. Um, but, uh, so I have some other ones, but you know, I don't know how much you want me to go into it. Yeah. I love the Kobe call. I think that you're absolutely right. He's someone who unfortunately because of his early passing in such a tragic way sort of has become a household name. Like I think all of our um, my, my, you know, my daughter knows, knows who he is because of that. Like she doesn't know who he, she doesn't know about his basketball career. Um, so there's, there's going to be more and more awareness. I have to imagine there's going to be some sort of, they call me magic esque, uh, documentary about Kobe. Oh, dude, um, Kobe cards are going to go. He's got a story. He's got, he's got a story because, you know, he had a little, he had a little off the court incident in Colorado he bought his wife a big ring and then there was a press conference. I mean, he, it's not, it hasn't been, it wasn't, you know, his death aside, it wasn't, it was, it was a dramatic story for Kobe. He's drafted by the yeah. Hornets, traded on draft night. So there's just a lot of stuff that people don't know about Kobe and, yeah. but everybody knows Kobe. And so I think that you, I think that you could get a documentary on Kobe that, you know, I, I like it's, it's a thing where people will be like, Oh yeah, everyone talks about the last dance. I get it. I'm not saying that, it's going to be the last dance type of thing. But I do think that when like winning time, I've talked about it before. It's an amazing show and they call me magic is an amazing documentary and I'm emotionally attached to magic, but um, people are emotionally attached to Kobe the same way. You've got the Lakers. He never left that franchise. He, he almost left that franchise several times. So there's a lot of drama in the Kobe story and his death aside. So it, I think it would be a cultural phenomenon to get a Kobe series of shows or documentary as well and he was a link between generations too like another yeah. really unique fact is he totally played with some of those dudes that were on the tail ends of their careers you know like think i mean he played with jordan you know jordan like, Barkley, and, and like then, all the all the guys yeah yeah i mean and then he was on the same team as several goats you know like yeah uh you know like Obviously shack shack <laughs> hello you know um and then he even i think was on the same court as uh carl malone wasn't carl malone on one of his teams yeah that was my that was my that was the team we beat my team beat them we beat uh kobe Shaq, carl malone and gary payton that was the yeah. lakers uh four of the lakers starters that year so yeah well, he's, he's first played, off you got a lot a of big names to be in. of teams <laughs> like, i know and they weren't all necessarily in their prime right there, but wow, some names. Holy cow. 
Yeah, when you face Gary Payton in the finals and you face Carl Malone in the finals, then he's never won. And neither one of those guys have ever won a championship before. It's not going to be easy, even if they're not in their, even if they're not in their prime. So really good call on Kobe. There's a lot to talk about with Kobe. So let us know what you guys think in the comments. That's great stuff. I think my vintage play would be, um, honestly, grading. I think vintage, I think, because to me, you know, we've talked about before, why aren't retired players in, and I'll just say, I'll say retired players, because that's how I, I mean, I shouldn't define vintage as retired players, but that's actually what I, what I actually mean is retired players. So there's no, there's no real markers with retired players. And so grading is still an opportunity, especially now that PSA is back open at a $50 economy level. Or like if you want to go through wild cards, box breaks, I think you guys charge 60 bucks a card, something like that. I know you're not really making money on that. You're doing it as a service. So, but that's something, obviously, if you want to get into the ecosystem of wild cards, that's a, I think that's a low hanging fruit to say, Hey, I want to send Kendall and T my card. Can you guys grade it? I'm going to, I'm going to do that with you guys. So we'll talk off offline on that. But like, um, I think grading is a thing. It's going to be a thing again. We talked in the last episode about my PSA submission that I'm waiting on at $12 a card. And I actually think that like, it would be super fun to go back through a bunch of guys. Maybe it's Iverson and Garnett, maybe it's Wilt and Kareem. And you got to be careful, obviously, if it's guys like Wilt Kareem and Bill Russell, because you don't know what's been trimmed. You don't know what, you know, if something's raw, you really got to be careful. Um, but I think that you could, um, you could see some 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 grading plays with retired players coming back in the next couple of years. So I, I just think that's cool. That's just fun. You might not make any money. It's a risk. But I think that's fun, something I had to get into, especially when you're like grading cards that you tried to keep in good condition as a kid or maybe buying a lot. If you can make someone's day and buy like their lot from when they were a kid for like 200 bucks and then have fun going through that lot and sending sending in maybe the top – five or 10 cards into PSA or SGC. I think that's a play. Yeah, I would agree with that. I have a buddy who's just going nuts on doing that actually. Like he's buying these people's lots that they're, they go into a card shop and they'll, and the card shop tells them, wow, this is worth, you know, nothing. The guy buys them yeah. and then is grading some of them and then flipping them for the entire collection, you know? Um, yeah. I, I forgot to mention one thing about Kobe. So if I can go back to that for just a second. Um, I actually have one card that I'm kind of honing in on that is um, my Kobe play that is uh, not a rookie card, actually. Um, it's a 2008-2009 um, tops number 24. So what makes this card unique is Kobe is being guarded by LeBron in the photo. Um, and it's I think it's going to be a iconic card in the hobby um in in the future because you know just like just like kobe lebron is i mean we've never seen anything like him you know and so that 2008 tops 24 card yeah this one right here this is actually my favorite kobe card um because i grew up watching these two guys right here and they were just like untouchable to me like they were just I mean, growing up, like you couldn't guard either one of them and now they're guarding each other. And then look, this is lockdown defense. You know, like this isn't one of them dunking on another one. This is them literally having a battle, you know, and this card is super normal. This is just a regular card in the set, but it's come on to be a really important card for me in my collection. I actually have two of them, um, just base ones. But like, if I was looking at just something to really put money into for the long term, I would get like a uh, an out of uh, like an out of tw- um, one ninety nine or something like a a colored version of this card, and I would I would go deep on that. So um, that's yeah. that's the play that I would make right now, actually. Yeah, I like that. There's a two. There's an out of two eighty eight. Um, there's also I like. I wonder with my play with what I'm doing with Irvin magic, is there how many of these did Kobe maybe sign that got authenticated? Oh um, yeah, that's good. And that, that could be, that could be another play where even if you can find like a Beckett Beckett witnessed or whatever and pay, I would say pay whatever you need to for that. Because again, the play of crossing that over to PSA with a, 
card grade and an auto grade could be could be a thing. So I like I like your I like your idea there. Um and it is it is a cool card. Like I I feel like it's it's an example of even if you get the base card, if you can get it, you know, in a higher grade, um, PSA nine, PSA ten, SGC ten, that's a interesting, interesting card to add to the collection. And yeah, I like it. So I want to just hit on a couple, uh, actually one more topic. I, back when nooffseason.com was a fantasy football website, I used to do a column on Mondays called we were right about, we were wrong about, because I think it's important. You know, we talk about buying a lot of players, but do we hold ourselves accountable for where we were really wrong? I think we say a lot of really smart things. And I think that we provide way more value than when we're actually wrong then we take value away. But I think that, um, or we, we try not to mislead you. I think like maybe there are times when we mislead you. I think that, you know, I made a call that I thought a Becky Hammond card prism auto could double or triple in price when she became the first female NBA head coach. And I, I got to say, I dropped the ball on even mentioning like she became the head coach of the WNBA Las Vegas Aces back in January. So as I was updating her profile, I was just kind of like, man, I not only was I wrong for now, I mean, she could still be an NBA head coach. You never know. Like she could, she can, she could still be the first female um, NBA head coach. Um, Dawn Staley would probably be the other one. So if you want to look at Dawn Staley cards, that could be, that could be an interesting play, but um, Charlotte sting of the WNBA. But um. I think that, yeah, uh, to Dang, also miss that she, she signed that deal. Yeah, Becky Hammond. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think, you know, she, she, they could, they, she's still marketable. She still could, yeah. you know, she could win a WNBA championship in Las Vegas. And all of a sudden, you know, those, you know, I spent, I think, $50 total on two, you know, $25 a piece on two different Becky Hammond auto 2020 WNBA prism autos with her in the, raw in the silver stars uniform uh san antonio and so my thought was wow if she becomes the next spurs head coach and i've got these cards in a silver stars uniform that could be pretty cool that could still happen but for the time being i just don't know if becky hammond is like a play anymore um i think you should probably just cut your losses if you listen to me you should probably just um maybe list them and, and get what get what you can get back for them because i just don't I think that it's going to be hard to get her out of the WNBA now that she's back, but I could be wrong on that hot take too. We'll see what happens. But Dawn Staley could be the, the, the next one to look at. I'm not going to double down on my female NBA head coach plays, but I will say if you are intrigued by what I'm saying, just do a little research into Dawn Staley news. She's South Carolina's head coach and uh, could make a move to either the WNBA or the NBA at some point. And she's a badass, Dawn Staley. Dude, Good she's person. so cool. <laughs> she's super cool. Yeah. I watched the uh, so the cha- the uh, final, the UConn versus South Carolina, and just watching her, I'm like, man, this girl's bad. She's super. She's cool, man. Yeah, I she's can a imagine being a player man. under her. If you're a player under Don, like you're just gonna run through a wall for her. Like she's just yeah. one of those kind of people. I mean, Dawn Staley, 2005 Rittenhouse WNBA signature autos probably will be pretty affordable raw. And then if you want to maybe have them graded as a play, that would be interesting. If you are a WNBA fan or a women's basketball fan, there's a lot of you out there. So cool. She's also got the Sports Illustrated for Kids rookie card. And so there's some nostalgia there. She's signed some of them, um, whatnot. So there's some interesting Dawn Staley cards, but did want to say we were wrong. I, I was wrong about Becky Hammond. Murph agreed with me. So he was wrong too, but I was really the one who was wrong. Hey, I was right um, there too. And it, I couldn't afford at the time. I was like, dude, I'm totally getting one of these. And it was like a little out of my price range. And then I was like, uh, okay, I'll look at it in a month or two. And now I'm like, man, I'm glad I did have the money for that. <laughs> Yeah, it was a flyer. It was a flyer. It, it fell in my flyer category of, um, of my portfolio. And so encouraging mm-hmm. you to be a little bit safer than the flyers consistently, but also have some flyers in there because you just never know. Um, 
I mentioned Tyrese Maxey, and I think I mentioned Jordan Poole and Desmond Bain earlier in the show. And this is a good segue into the gauntlet because I also mentioned Cam Thomas, who I think is probably going to be a guy who could be the next – he's in the discussion for the next Jordan Poole and um, Tyrese Maxey for sure. He's already on a, on a playoff team, and Kyrie's future is up in the air. So what we're going to do now is we're going to – Start the gauntlet with the Cam Thomas card, another one, one that I didn't buy. It's actually better. It's better than the one. It's better than the two that I bought. Um, so, Kendall, without any preparation, <laughs> there's, there's a Cam Cameron. Cam search, search Cameron, by the way, because he's he, he, NBA.com lists him as Cam, but – his card says Cameron, all of his cards say Cameron. So if you search Cam Thomas rookie auto, you're going to get like two results. If you search Cameron Thomas rookie auto, you're going to get like all the results. So um, here is an out of 10 and it's a contenders rookie patch auto. And that he signed Cam Thomas. He said he signed Cam Thomas and I like his signature. I think I'm actually glad that I'm remembering to say this because I think it, People, we all know how people are in the hobby, and they're going to find a reason to lowball you. No offense, yeah. everybody out there, but you are going to find a reason to lowball it, the, the <laughs> seller. And so when you see an auto that's like the player, like, like a scribble, or like the first, first initial, last initial, I think there could be a larger discussion one day around sports card investing in autograph quality. Um, you already have sticker versus on card. I think autograph quality is not that far away. I think every Cam Thomas auto I've seen is a quality auto. I like his signature. This one's less than five hundred dollars. Based on what I said earlier in the show, I think you could probably get this for maybe two seventy five or three. But it kind of doesn't matter. I just want you to pick the card between okay. first matchup, Cam Thomas. And a guy that I have been really high on, and I just think that maybe I'm the only one in the world that likes this guy. He's on the sports card investment report as like number 128 or 129. But Van Jefferson um, is a stud and the, 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 he's a second round pick for the Rams. And he just hasn't had the opportunity yet because he plays behind Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, but they traded Robert Woods to the Titans. I'm interested to see what our guy Andy Kaysen has to say about a guy like Van Jefferson. I haven't had a chance to ask him about it yet, but to me, um, there's also, I have a fascination with Nike and the Nike swoosh patch. Um, I think that culturally that matters. And I think, uh, obviously the NFL shield matters in a patch. And so this is a one of one and you just don't get an opportunity very often to buy a one of one on card auto with a, with a Nike patch for, for honestly, like, I'm not trying to say nine ninety nine is cheap, but Normally these cards, like you're not going to get them for, you know, at least five grand or, or 10 grand, um, 10 X this amount. So you would have to believe that Van Jefferson can get some numbers this year with the Rams and elevate from, he's either the future of the Rams wide receiving core, or he's going to get traded and kind of not really be, you not have that much hype around him. So it could go either way. It's 50, 50 on Van Jefferson. So between Cam Thomas, they're both flyers, Cam Thomas and Van Jefferson. Who do you pick and why? These cards specifically, not just the players, but the cards. Oh, man. Um, oh, man. Um, I'm probably going to pick Cam Thomas here. Um, not because I don't agree with your rationale on Van Jefferson, but I still probably I'm still coming off the realization or maybe not realization, but I'm coming off an assumption of saying that Van Jefferson prices are still inflated because of the Super Bowl victory. Um, so unless I could get this for like maybe around 650 or 700, um, I'm if it's 999 versus 500 Cam Thomas, I'm going to hedge my bet a little bit and go towards this Cam Thomas one, um, specifically because it's a rookie ticket. It's out of 10, which is really not that far away from a one on one. There's a lot more room for growth on Cam Thomas, I think, than Van Jefferson. Like Cam Thomas is closer to the top echelon of players in the NBA rather than 
if you look at Van Jefferson, I don't even I don't think he's at the um he could probably be one of the top wide receivers, but even in the grand scheme of the NFL, he's probably not, you know, top 25 in the NFL when you're looking at sk- like just all players. Like if Cam Thomas reaches his projection, he could potentially be in that top 25 in in the NBA. Now, it would take a lot for him to be there, and I'm not saying he is that, but I'm saying the likelihood of Cam Thomas being that top 25 in the NBA is higher, I think, than Van Jefferson's chance of being top five in the NFL. Um, and out of 10 and out of one, one of one, I am right there with you with the Nike swoosh auto. I think it's sick. Um, but I'm going to choose the Cam Thomas. Yeah. All right. Love it. Now, Cam Thomas versus Gronk. And I like this Gronk card because it's a 2010 rookie auto out of 90. And it's a cool signature, I think. And he looks like a badass. I mean, I'm a big, I'm emotionally attached to Gronk because he's been on my dynasty team since he was a rookie. I took him and I just haven't let him go. You lucky dog. uh, You know, yeah. You didn't drop it when he retired? No, I kept him on injured reserve. We have one injured reserve slot. So I kept him on injured reserve. And then, uh, so he's still on my team right right now. We don't have to make roster moves until August, but um, he's currently retired. But the the word is that he's going to come back and play because Brady's coming back. And so now this this crosses over into the retired player discussion we had. But also, I want to make two more points on this. But there's a marker that he could come back. There's a marker that he could win another Super Bowl. There's also a marker that he is involved with the WWE and this card looks like he's about to kick someone's ass in the WWE. So I think the design of this card um, has me intrigued by the entire, the, the entire Gronk play. I'm not like buying any Gronk card, but I think this one in particular just caught my eye. And then, you know, maybe I get it graded or somebody gets it graded. You, you out there in the audience, you buy it, get it graded. And now, it's a PSA nine and it's worth even more. I don't know. Uh, what do you think between um, it's cheaper to get Gronk than it is Cameron Thomas who wins between Gronkatron as I call him in my fantasy football um, opponents hated that um, versus uh, Cameron Thomas. Yeah. It's Gronkatron for me. This is a sick card. This is a sick card. It's out of, it's out of 90. Um, I think I, it's a little off center, a left to right looks like. Um, so it's not going to gym. Um, but like, there's probably a little more space on that left side than there's on the right side in terms of centering. Um, but this is a super cool card. I think Gronk will go down as one of the best tight ends of all time. Um, which will help, uh, he, he, you know, he was kind of one of the, I wouldn't say he's the first cause you know, that's dis, that's disrespectful for greats um, in front of him but I think he was one of the first that potentially took the wide receiver role or took the tight end role and made it a semi-wide receiver role you know and uh, and I think Gronk is a guy that's going to be tagged with with Brady's legacy forever you know like yeah. and I think there are other guys that Gronk could have been you know like they're uh, like if if another guy was in Gronk's place he's still you know, there could have been other guys in Gronk's place is what I'm saying. But like, because he was tagged with Brady, because he has the championships, because he has all that is great. But what makes Gronk what he is, is his personality. Like totally. he, he w- went from a great player to a guy that fans love. And that also builds into two card markets a lot. And so I'm totally taking the Gronk. Totally. Love it. I might have to pull trigger before this airs. I've got an offer for two eighty five for this card. Yeah, from I saw the seller. that. I, it does. It <laughs> looks like it has some surface issues and some corners, um, which maybe I'll use to be like, "Hey, I'll give you two fifty because of the surface and the corners." Um, but I think this could be an interesting. Like, what I like about this is that there's markers and there's a reason. There's a thought process behind buying this card, other than I like Gronk. Um, I think that's important to think through. So, all right. So Gronk's the winner. Now we just got two more cards and then we'll wrap up. So the next card, Gronk is going to go up against basically the Pedri that I bought. So yeah. <laughs> this is the Pedri that I bought. Um, it's an auto. I think he has a cool looking signature green refractor out of 99 and it's a PSA eight. 
So it's already slabbed. You know what you're getting. You know that he's, you know, he's a, a prospect, a top prospect, and has a lot of upside at Barca as well as the Spanish national team. So mm-hmm. what's your take on basically $610 for this Pedri versus, you know, say 300 for the Gronk? They're all in the same range um, for the sake of the discussion. Um, you can break my heart. It's fine. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm not completely sold on Pedri to be honest. Um, I, I've I've watched him. I like him, you know, but I'm not sure that he's going to be. I think just because he's good and he's on Barcelona, people are like he's going to be the next Messi. You know, like no, there yep. there might not be another Messi. And there might not be another Messi on Barcelona. Like it might be a guy that's like some on some other team that ends up being like the next huge thing, you know, like, um, and, uh, so, you know, I'm not, I, you know, I look at the phrase like lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place. I think all those sports, that's a completely different and irrelevant and totally, I could, my argument breaks down really fast there. But um, I could break your argument down really fast. No, I know. I know he's potentially going to be the one of the greats in the in, in soccer, but I'm not convinced. And because I'm not yeah, convinced, no, that's I'm cool. I'm glad. I'm definitely not going to buy you, a PSA you know more. Eight. Yeah, I mean, again, cards are cheaper for a reason, and this could be that I got a, a card less expensive because it is a PSA eight. Um, obviously, we have different opinions on Pedri's trajectory to me he's not a long-term hold like I plan on flipping Pedri um pretty quickly but um Uh, honestly like with this card specifically I would I would crack the slab and sell it raw okay interesting interesting play um all right so you're picking Gronk so you're picking Gronk Gronk still wins and there's one more footballer that he's going to go up against. And we've hit on this topic uh, almost every mm-hmm. week just because I'm fascinated by the play around guys who don't have that many autos, yeah. having, having them signed after they're ripped from a pack. Um, Kendall's probably getting sick of me doing this to him, but I think for the audience it's relevant because like, yeah. um, you've got a Vinicius Jr. auto. There's not many Vinicius Jr autos that you can rip from that are chase cards and so it's a tops crystal which i don't know anything about so you can tell us about that um you can tell us more about this particular card but he's in a madrid jersey uh real madrid jersey and uh he's a young young superstar still a lot of the hype is wore off but he's still right he's still right in with real madrid and the brazilian national team playing with the best players in the world and is one you know performance away from a card spike so i wonder if there's not a play with getting this slapped by psa with a card grade and an auto grade yeah tops crystal is, so there is a unique... there's more sorry to cut Go you ahead. off there is more than 10 available like that's some that's actually something i think it's it's worth looking at like how many watchers um this is more than 10 available one sold so you can go check the comp on that um I think it is worth like how many bids were, you know, what the, the last card have those kinds of things, but sorry, you, that stuff kind of doesn't matter too much. Well, who'd you pick between the Vinicius and the Gronk here? Oh um, man. Tops crystal. I believe, I believe was a, uh, a tops release outside of the country. Um, if I remember correctly, I think it was a, uh, like it was a product that was released in Europe. I think. Um, I'm not super cl- uh, for sure on that, but it is like a see-through card. It, it, it reminds me of like when um, Sprite did their Sprite remix. Uh, I don't know why, yeah. but I don't know if you remember that. But like, it was like they yeah. made like a the regular Sprite, but like just look cooler. And I think this is what they did uh-huh. with Tops. They're like, we're going to make some soccer cards that just look cooler, you know, and they have rounded corners. Um, all of them do. Um, they're see-through. So they, they, they are kind of like a glass type. I, they're not glass. They're made of, you know, regular. I don't know if they're made of like plastic or something, but, um, but they are uh, translucent. 
Um, but the Holland card in that set, it actually is kind of popular. Um, but in terms of the Beckett auto um, witnessed, and because there's 10 of them, you can tell this guy like went to a Vinicius um, like uh, signing signing like at the national there's like sign there, there will be players there and you can pay you know so much for to have players sign your stuff but it's like a hundred dollars per auto <laughs> and so yeah. i don't know how this guy got 10 of these and now he's gonna sell them for what is it 600 back up a little bit so i can see that uh, he wants three 399 so okay so that's probably really close to what he has in him i would assume um, mm-hmm. which probably means it's kind of hard for him to move them. Um, I'm not opposed to a Vinicius auto because of who he is and because they're hard to find. Uh, this is a tough one. Um, is he Spanish? He's Brazilian. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Plays with that's Neymar. Dumb, that was a dumb question. <laughs> um, that's the soccer guy. You want me to know that? Um, yeah, I'm probably picking this Vinicius Auto over the over the Gronk, but just because of the position that soccer market is in right now. Nice, Gronk is pissed at you, but Vinicius wins, so that's that's okay. Gronk would probably buy the Vinicius Auto too, so. Yeah, Gronk, I love what you said about Gronk's personality. He's definitely someone that, you know, he's, he's been on YouTube channels. He's been on Shark Tank. He's, he's going to be culturally relevant. He's freaking time, on the USAA his, commercials. Like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. And he's I, don't, got, I don't know yeah, if you have USAA like, commercials in, in Spain. But no. for some reason, the USAA was like, who should we have do our uh, military banking you know, like, what? Well, let's do Gronk. He's not even eligible. It's amazing. That's amazing. Um, would love to know what you guys, who you guys would pick in the gauntlet between these cards. Kendall, great job as always. And uh, graphs and charts brought to you by marketmoversapp.com. We used a lot of their data on this episode, and they're a good partner. Really, really would love you to sign up for marketmoversapp.com and use the promo code no off season. You get your first month for only $1 and it really helps Kendall and I out, gives us a little bit of money in the bank to do some improvements to the website and the show and the business. Uh, so we appreciate that. We're not getting rich, but it does help us out. And it is a good product. It is worth, it is worth your money. Otherwise we wouldn't talk about it. Um, and then of course the no offseason.com sports card investment report where you can save 20% on your first month by using the promo code no off season. We would love you to check that out and we love your feedback on that. And then of course I got to throw out the Facebook group. That's where we would connect with you most often, of course, at lefty McKee and at no off season card on Twitter. But I think that where we connect with you, where you get a little bit of extra value from us is if you join the Facebook group. So go to sportscardstrategy.com and just click the link to subscribe to the Facebook group and I'll let you in there and we'll have some fun talking about your sports card investment strategy. Kendall, great having you as always, my man. Great work on today's show. And uh, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Um, you know, in, in PTI, um, pardon the interruption, where uh, or not PTI, uh, what's the show where they vote? And like the, you know what I'm talking about on ESPN? Is it the one that's on? Where you vote it's on before the guy, PTI? Yeah, it's the one that's right before PTI. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, where the is guy it, like votes is it, is people it, up and down. Yeah. Is it Tony Reale's show where he's on both of them? I don't know. I haven't, well, I don't get those, I don't get those channels anymore, unfortunately. So I don't, I don't know. Well, who regardless, is. I think people know what I'm talking about. Anyway, at the very end, when they win, they get to talk about like this random thing that they are passionate about for like five yeah. seconds. And so <laughs> that reminds, every time you do that to me, <laughs> it reminds me of like, Kendall, this is your random five seconds to just add whatever the heck you want. Um, and I'm going to talk about all for Cincy FC Cincinnati for the last uh, three years has been the worst club ever, like ever. They've been so bad. And through 
um, through the season so far. They're on a three-game win streak. They've got more points in the league than they've ever had, and they just cracked the t- uh, the top ten in terms of power rankings in the MLS. And I know there's probably a lot more MLS haters than there are MLS fans that listen to this podcast, but as a season ticket holder of SC Cincinnati, I'm super pumped, and I've loved watching them this year. Love it. MLS is coming for you. I mean, we've got um... – not only do we have our guy Caden Clark in there, um, who's a uh, whose dad's a friend of the show, I think it's safe to say, um, but also uh, my my good friend Marcus Whitney is the uh, co-owner of the of the Nashville FC club in Nashville. So shout out Marcus. Dude, seriously, and, um, also, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he helped he helped bring the team to Nashville. It's an amazing story behind how Marcus and he's he's a Tottenham Hotspur guy but his now obviously nashville sc is where he has a beautiful a minority new ownership stake beautiful in the franchise yeah and, and i don't know if you're talking about nashville fc or if you're talking about tottenham they both have new stadiums but nashville sc just opened their new stadium yeah i was talking also, about nashville. shout out uh yeah shout out caitlin Mello, who she and i used to do web design and development work together back in the day and she's now the director of marketing for the nashville fc club so good work out of her um you know mls is coming mls is coming once once there's more interest uh well actually let me rephrase we should probably get those guys on the show to talk mls maybe we can get them on the soccer card strategy show with you and i, I would love that just to yeah, talk about the that. state of the mls um if they'd give us like 10 15 minutes and then that way when mls blows up they'll remember like okay sports card strategy show had us on first we're going to come back to them and break some news out of nashville out of the league that kind of thing so um be awesome. good good call out of mls let's not forget about our major league when you come back to the, the states, states let's just go to nashville and just we'll just <laughs> go record a live show let's go let's go to a game we'll record a live show at the game and we'll have fun and um Maybe we'll even have some live guests on, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, we definitely should do that. So I think they, they play in the summer, and so there should be yep. there should be at least one home game when I'm in town, hopefully. So Sweet. let's try to do let's, it, man. Let's look at that. All right. Oh, I love it. This is my – hopefully hopefully you all feel uh, the same way that Kendall and I do about these hour and 45-minute to two-hour sessions every week. We really appreciate you listening. Everybody, thanks, and have a great day.